hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now it's going to be both relaxation and a sleep session and it's up to you what you choose to do. If you're listening solely for relaxation, I suggest you sit in a comfortable chair and if you've got something you need to do and somewhere you need to be in the future hour or two, then I suggest you also set an alarm that doesn't alarm you. So ideally something soft and gentle to wake you up. Weird word, isn't it? Alarm. It's the worst word. It's a horrible way to be woken up, isn't it? To be alarmed. (laughs) So something gentle... Uh, If you're listening for the sleep, then I suggest you lay down in your bed. Um, Get yourself comfortable. Remember, you can you can change positions any time you choose. And the bed is. I know other activities can occur on top of a a bed but ultimately they are designed for sleep they're designed so that when you lay down on the mattress on the top of the bed your body has a sense not just of relaxation but also pleasure the pleasure of being supported the pleasure of not having to do anything at all the pleasure of the physical sensations of those individual muscles relaxing And then your head touches the pillow. And when your head touches the pillow, that is a signal to your mind, for your mind to slow down. And I know that Many people over the years have told me that, have contacted me to tell me that one of the main issues that they have regarding sleeping is often the overactive mind, the constant chitter chatter, the constant perhaps uh, bombardment of thoughts that they don't wish to have at that time so in a way the idea of that is doesn't kind of make sense in a way does it Uh, what I mean by that is when I've needed to think about something I don't think I've ever said I'm going to go to bed and think this over if anything I think uh, being a bit more active can help going for a walk or Maybe doing some exercise or just sitting 
or maybe sitting at a desk with you know a pencil and paper or pen and paper uh trying to find a solution for that particular issue that may be on my mind so one of the possible reasons that we may have a perhaps a bit of an overactive mind when we lay down in bed is because possibly we haven't given those thoughts the attention that they required during the day I say possibly okay what I mean by that is some of us put quite a lot of effort into distracting ourselves from thinking as if thinking is a dirty word so distracting ourselves with conversations television various different entertainments Facebook the internet all of those things are very good at distracting us from maybe facing an issue that is requiring attention. But when you go to bed and you're just lying there, there are no longer any distractions. And you're almost forced to confront those thoughts that you've been maybe avoiding, evading, or basically hiding from possibly throughout the day. And all of this is just natural human behaviour it's not I mean I don't think it's a, any any reason to you know feel bad about it or anything just it's natural not to want to experience suffering it's natural to move away from suffering or feeling uncomfortable it's natural to do that or to distract ourselves from it in the hope that it will go away or putting it off to another time there's lots of different ways of not dealing with issues just by keeping busy which is very very easy really there's lots that can be done especially if you've got a family or you're caring for somebody more if you, you know you're working that's there's a lot of opportunities to stay busy and distracted from those thoughts but when you lie down on your bed there's nowhere else for those thoughts initially to go because they were always in your mind even though you may have been pushing them away from your immediate conscious thought so what do you do now with these unwanted intrusions almost isn't it it's almost like you've something's forced itself into your mind and you didn't want it you don't want it there but there may be a very valid reason why 
it is there and it could simply be that you need to give it attention it needs your attention and it may be a problem that needs solving or at least an attempt at sorting the issue out Now lying down in your bed, wanting, hoping, expecting to fall asleep, it's not the time to deal with that stuff. I think it's really useful to to have boundaries when it comes to your bedroom and your bed. So there's only a very few activities that you can do on your bed. I suppose there's lots. I mean, you could do jigsaw puzzles. I guess you could bounce up and down, pretending it's a trampoline. Um... You know, there's lots of different things you could do. But there's only a few major things generally that we do on beds. And the main one is sleeping. So one thing you could do is to separate the room that you sleep and the room where you watch television and do things like that. And as I said that, I'm very aware that not everybody has more than one room. I didn't for nearly 30 years, so I know what it's like to pretty much use the bed, not just for sleeping, but also for sitting up. So it was like a chair as well as a bed. Sitting up, watching telly, eating my dinner there as well. So I understand that we're all in different positions and situations. So other alternatives, other possibilities as far as thinking is concerned before you lie down on your bed or listen to uh, relaxation sleep, hypnosis, recording, you can write down on a piece of paper exactly what's on your mind. Of course you don't have to write it in exact uh, written language, you can do just the basic, you know, basically what's going on. You don't have to write uh, an essay. And then you can just leave that at the side of the bed, knowing that you can address those things the following day, if you choose. Yeah, so... That's one thing that you can do. Other things when it comes to thinking, you could go for a walk. Maybe sit at a table with a pen and some paper, a pad. Maybe you could do it online or do it on you know, Word or some kind of uh, computer software writing down what you may need to do
So instead of being a distraction, that activity is a focus. It's an opening up to those feelings and thoughts that may have been getting in the way of you relaxing deeply and sleeping. Possibly. And by making your own rule that you'll spend time every day, whether it's five or ten minutes or longer, thinking about what's going on in your life, the things that are important, and deciding what things need your attention the most. So you can think about some stuff and come up with a solution, whether short or long term. And every day you do that for maybe five or ten minutes. And it doesn't have to be uh, a negative experience. It, in, f in fact, even if it's a really difficult issue, there's a lot of positivity from the fact that you are addressing it. Regardless of whether there's anything you can do or not. You're still addressing it. You're still focusing on that situation. You're giving it time. You're giving it energy. You're giving it attention. So it doesn't need to knock on your door, the door of your mind when you're lying in bed wanting to go to sleep Does, it doesn't need to do that because you give attention to those issues every day for a few minutes or longer Which allows you to keep updated on what's going on. Keeps you balanced. So that you know that you'll solve whatever issues you can, and those that are not or may currently seem unsolvable can be left for now. something quite nice I feel about deciding for yourself
It's a nice feeling. Lovely feeling. It's very freeing. I know at first the idea of every day allowing yourself five or ten minutes or longer if you choose to face I guess almost like facing the music as it were facing those things that you'd rather push away the issues that do need or may not need your attention and that's another thing as well is sometimes the the important things can get muddled up with the trivial things but when you're lying in bed wanting to sleep it doesn't really matter what the thoughts are if they are just you know getting in the way of you sleeping so giving yourself allowing yourself time every day to just sit down and think gives you the opportunity to separate the trivial stuff from the relevant issues which in itself reduces your worries by a lot and I use the word worries because I'm being realistic. We all have things that we worry about sometimes. But those worries can be turned into issues. Those problems can be turned into solvable issues which require your attention and maybe a bit of work a bit of thinking maybe asking for help is what's required And also maybe accepting that the problem may possibly be too big for you to deal with on your own or something that is out of your control something that maybe you've been worrying about, concerned about, stressed about even, when actually there's nothing that you'll ever be able to do about it because it's out of your control. So being able to face up to that as well, eases your mind because you've done all you can do and even sitting in a chair 
your mind feels more relaxed. Because nothing is needed from you when you decide to relax. And when you decide to go to sleep. Nothing is required. No thoughts or thinking is necessary at all. Because the process of relaxing deeply and sleeping deeply is all naturally inbuilt. Naturally able to know exactly what it is that you require. So the anticipation about how you're going to feel next time you go to sleep. You can notice that actually Something seems to something seems to feel really nice. Knowing that you've done all that you can during the working day. As you imagine. you're going to feel now you can start to feel optimistic positive really notice how You can notice that there's not much actually going on. Not much brain activity, not much in the way of thoughts. Because I've not been invited, they don't need your attention. And the reason they don't need your attention is because they've had your attention during the day. Those thoughts, issues, problems mixed with trivial stuff, mixed with things that you can't change. But you can. In 
enjoy the space that is left the time for relaxing deeply and sleeping so naturally and it brings a balance to you and your life As you focus on your mind, feeling more relaxed, relaxation continues to spread through your body, your mind, enjoys feeling relaxed and as we all know deep deep relaxation produces deep sleep Enjoying a little walk every day may also give you the opportunity to think things over. that sense of comfort increases increases and As you move from the state of feeling relaxed, your body, the more you relax, the deeper relaxed you feel. Just like my stomach grumbling because I'm so relaxed. Find you'll find that all you need to 
do to drift off to sleep is just close your eyes focus in on how good it feels to be lying down on your bed and also noticing how good it feels to just be you how good it feels it's all about letting go completely As you drift in your mind, you may be feeling a bit fuzzy listening to me. Relaxing even deeper. you focus on all of us drifted and enjoying Comfort of knowing just how easy it is to relax deeply and to fall asleep automatically. Sometimes just the idea of letting go and allowing yourself so deeply the sleeping becomes the easiest thing in the world sleeping is the easiest thing in the world Sometimes believe how easily we can feel relaxed.
every number you hear in miles steady sliding from relaxation into sleeping deeply to be